So many buildings still remaining in old Montreal that would be built during the French regime because the French would build wooden houses. Uh, so those buildings here are more typical of the British regime in the big first. We'll be stopping the first time, not very far from here, uh, where you see this post-modern building over there. Uh, it's the place where Montreal was found. The river, the St. Lawrence River, was right here. And just on the other side of the square, you can see from here, there was another uh, little river, St. Pierre River. So the place the French Jews built the first houses and the first fort was right there, where the square uh, was uh, made about 20 years ago. You could also see there, down there, the first uh, French cemetery of Montreal. It's a bit spooky, by the way. Uh, you can see uh, the graves. You don't see the corpses in the map, of course, but you can see uh, where the graves were and we made uh, projection on the wall. Uh, you see people walking, kind of a funeral parade. Uh, they have a soundtrack also, so you can hear the name of everything. Uh, grave, later you'll see on your left, empty. They don't want to demolish it. Uh, even if a lot of Montrealers would like to see it disappear, uh, but uh, they will keep it and it will be probably converted into, uh, well, would like to see that, uh, contemporary art uh, museum. So maybe in a couple of years from now we'll know what will happen. But it's the oldest industrial neighborhood of Canada that is now being reconverted into a residential neighborhood. So there's a lot of work that will be happening on the other side of the canal in the next year. So very simple in Montreal. You know, this uh, country complex was built in 1967 for the World Fair of Montreal. The architect was uh, Moshe Sanfi, the man who was born in Israel. Uh, architecture here at Miguel University. He was only 21 years old in 1967. This was his very first home. So you can see from here, three apartments has its own little hanging garden on the top of the next block. And of course, you'll never see the neighbors with no face in the garden. So just in time for the Expo 67. So that's how they create Notre Dame Island. They just needed spaces because 65 nations would take part on this big uh, international party we had in Montreal. Yeah. So, you know, 65 pavilions were built, of course, for each of the countries. So now we're standing just near the France pavilion, the white building over there. And the golden building just next to it on the right was the Quebec pavilion. Most of the buildings, most of the pavilions were demolished after uh, the expo, but only seven would remain today. So Quebec, France, which are now part of the Montreal Casino, the biggest casino here in Quebec. If you have any money to lose in Montreal, please come here. It's a very good source of revenue for the government of Quebec. So the building was uh, built with aluminum, which was new back in the 1960s. And there's a big, uh, glass uh, ball inside that uh, aluminum uh, out here. So Montreal Casino and just behind you you can see this white house that used to be the Jamaican pavilion here. You know I still remember because I'm old enough, you know, I was here. But I still remember my father would stand there at the little terrace at the Jamaican pavilion and wait for us. Uh, because we were visiting with my mother, of course, every country, every pavilion, but my father, I think, he was in love with a Jamaican waitress. And <laughs> he was discovering something, I think he knew that before, but uh, 
the Jamaican rum here was served on the terrace, so we'd spend the whole day there. At the end of the day, we'd, we'd find him uh, still drinking. Uh, they're not together anymore, my parents. I think you can guess why. <laughs> we were very happy that we didn't have to take the car to go back uh, to the city of Montreal. The metro was open. You know, you can get here very easily, not only by bike, but also uh, by metro. And there's one metro station uh, in this park. And it's, you see the gardens all around here? Uh, there are the remains of the gardens uh, we had here uh, in 1980 because we had this uh, international floral show in Montreal in 1980 that was called uh, Floralie Internationale. I don't, know, I don't remember how many countries would take part, but uh, those were uh, the few gardens that are still remaining today. We'll be going down to the uh, racetrack. We'll just do a little, a little stretch of the racetrack. You'll see another building. Not really interesting, but it's the remain of the Canadian pavilion uh, in 1967. You don't see the reversed pyramid that used to be there originally, but you just see uh, the administrative office of the park right now. So you see that building on your right. We won't even stop there. Uh, maybe later I could show you a picture of what the site, the site would look like uh, when I was a kid. So we'll stop uh, last time before we take back the bridge, and I'll, I'll show you a few uh, pictures of the so now we just take the racetrack. You'll see the track is divided into two lanes, one for motorists and one for bikers and uh, people who like to do uh, inline skating too. So it's open to the public here. All second. You can see here the pavilions we just did state pavilion uh, in 1967. And you know what, what was funny and I still remember that? The USSR pavilion was built just on the other side of the bridge, right there facing the United States pavilion. I'll show you again a picture of those two pavilions uh, in 1967. And then we'll be we'll we'll make just a, a small tour here uh, around uh, the Swan Lake, where I never saw any swan. I don't know why they call this place the Swan Lake. And we'll take back the the Pelaponfel bridge to go back to Montreal. So this is the stab Stabili or Stabile I, would, I was telling you about. So that piece of art was created by Alexander Calder here and it was installed at the beginning of the, the expo at the entrance of the site. So it was moved here so people could see it of course from here, from the park, but also from the city. So when you stand on the case over there you could also see St. Helens Island and this uh, piece of art. You have a much better view on the mountain from here, so you can see that uh, the buildings are not so high in Montreal. So I told you the tallest building is only 51 stories high. There's a rule here, nobody could build any building taller than the mountain. And the mountain is only 233 meters high. So you can see it again, uh, just at the left of the image. That brown building we saw much better when we were standing at the top.